Winter came and tore the north a new one. Danny and Johnny are weak as hell and Cersei is stronger than ever. What's next for the final half of the final season of Game of Thrones? Right now on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to the Game of Thrones miscast entertainment extravaganza for the mid-season with your host, JJ. I don't know if you guys know or not, but uh, Diet Coke is uh, sponsoring this episode, and uh, they used to have cocaine in it, but not anymore, but I still fucking drink it because I don't give a shit. And they still use cocoa leaves, so it's all good. And your other host, the expert of recaps, the man of recaps. Hey, welcome to the Man of Recaps. Great to be here, guys. Thanks for coming by. This host right here, Jon Snow, I, I mean, William Davis Moore, is happy to have you. All right, guys, first three episodes, what's your general thought? Go. Jesus. Uh, so good. Amazing. Um, just back to back. Every episode has been better than the last. Extremely cinematic. Uh, man, I'm just so excited. Just amazing. Amazing. And Man of Recaps? Yeah, I love Game of Thrones season. It's been great so far, and normally I hate having to wait a week between episodes, but with Game of Thrones, it's it's so fun. You get a full week of memes, analysis, jokes, everyone talking about it. It's great times. Yeah, you know, the memes are the best part of my entire <laughs> life. Jeez, I mean, th- th- this, this show has given the average person... Um, this like uh, energy to be so creative and the memes that have been coming out of this have just been brilliant. JJ, if you haven't noticed, puts up on our IG some seriously awesome memes. So if you want to see that, check it out. W- would you mind if I put up a couple memes right now? Put them up? Yeah, check this one out. Boom, Chakalaga. What do you think? Boom, Chakalaga. <laughs> right, and look at this one. <laughs> look at this shit. Look at, look at this. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Who would have thought of this one? It's ridiculous, the, the things these guys come up with. Yeah, but the first three episodes are are freaking epic, man. I mean, they started off perfect. They set everything up. Then the second, they they started to give you a little drama and give you what the stakes are. And the third, they just gave it to you, man. The third could have been a finale in its own right, right? Right, yeah. Are we into spoiler mode right now? This whole thing is spoiler mode, by the way. The the third episode could have been like very... It's like pretty much one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Yeah. And one of the best zombie movies I've ever seen, period. It had the the dead riding up the wall, like stepping on each other, just like World War Z. Yeah, but better. Yeah, but way better, man. Way better. Was epic. I love a good zombie apocalypse, and I love uh, Game of Thrones. That's been sort of the premise the whole time. What if we had a zombie apocalypse in medieval fantasy land? You know, how would that go? And yeah, it did not disappoint. I'm a big fan of that battle. No, it was wicked though in in medieval times because like you really have no recourse. You know, like it's crazy. Yeah, in The Walking Dead, like they, they're walking around, they got a pistol, and they get like a potato and put it in front of the gun or a flashlight, and they make a, a, like a suppressor out of it. So you're like, oh, that's kind of clever. But in fucking medieval times, you don't have any of that stuff. No. You just have a spear, <laughs> and you just like stab. <laughs> that's it. That's man. all you got. And, and you're using shards of like like old rock. <laughs> you know, that's it. Yeah. So I'm going to get into some just some little tiny things. What do you think of Bran's stares at Tyrion? Do you think that symbolizes anything? Do you think Tim, Tyrion's going to die, or is he going to play a huge role in something to come? Look, from from my understanding, Bran cannot see the future. He can only see what's happening. So okay. I really don't know what that means. I agree. I think um, that's a misconception. People think that Bran's like a, a Doctor Strange situation where he's seen all the futures and he's orchestrating events, but that doesn't seem to be how his powers work. I think he's just you know using his knowledge of the past and of everyone and sort of trying to <laughs> figure it out. Like predict the future based on yeah. what he knows is like an encyclopedia. I don't that- think he's even trying to predict the future. I think he's he sees so much. Keep in mind, like somebody who sees everything that's happening at all times, like his brain is working like at a level that we cannot even comprehend. Sure. Like if I was seeing all these, look, I can barely walk and use my cell phone at the same time. So imagine <laughs> seeing everything that's happening at the same time. I would be so annoying. You would like try to talk to me and be like, just can you like fuck off? Cause I'm trying to like see what everybody else is seeing right now. Is that a car coming? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that um, he recognizes maybe uh, Tyrion's ability to be a good uh, strategist and maybe yeah. he will be instrumental in the, in, in whatever battle is yet to come. But I don't think that it's a matter of like he's predicting uh, Tyrion's future in any way. 
All right. I, I kind of feel like that he does see the future a little bit. He just doesn't tell people because it, then it messes up what will happen. So he'll say in the end, like, well, you, you did everything you were supposed to do to get to the point you are. But he'll never tell you the point before the point. I think that's him just being nice, you know, because when uh, <laughs> Theon was like, hey, dude, I'm sorry that I did all the shit that I did. He's like, you know what? Don't worry, because you're here because all the things that you did. And that's it. I don't think he knew that he was going to die until the moment that... till the actual moment. Yeah. So, uh, night battles versus day battles. And I say that because of the, the crap the cinematographer is getting for the night battle. Yeah, I'm, I'll tell you what. I've always been a big fan of day battles because I do like to see what's going on. And, I mean, obviously this one had to be a night battle. And I think that's cool. It was actually... That's my, that is my only complaint. It was too dark for my tastes. You know, I was messing with my TV settings, trying to up the brightness, but then it, yeah. you know, looks a little washed out. Um, you know, the darkness is cool, I think, in in some sections, because then you really feel like you're there. You're like, oh, my God, you can't see. You're being suffocated by this horde of zombies. But I think for a, a lot of it, I would have cheated and just made it a little bit brighter. I loved the way that it was shot, to be honest with you. I loved that it was uh -huh. dark. The way that it started with the music and everything, it felt like I was watching a horror movie. Uh, wow. Episode three was a horror movie from beginning to end. The soundtrack was amazing. The cin the the cinematography was amazing. I was at the edge of my seat the entire time, yeah. from beginning to end. I was I cheered and cried about five or six times during this battle, and because <laughs> of that, I can't say anything negatively about it. I really like the contrast between like the dragon fire and the night. And the winter as a, as a breeze, as like a, as a force. Um, it kind of got a little frustrating toward the end where I was like, I kind of want to see what's going on more now. Like, I'm, I, I get it. Let's talk about the uh, soundtrack. Okay. So they did a lot of different things in this that they didn't do in a lot of the other ones. So like, the, usually they have the soundtrack that's pretty well known. They keep just doing variations of it. But they went totally left field at the very end and did like this really slow piano, quiet like all, they toned down all the sound effects. What do you think of his death? Wow. Running towards uh, the Night King with a spear in hand. Well, you know, it was it was brave. I guess that's what you do if you're the, really the last man standing and there's the Night King. You're like, let me just go for it. But, um, you know, yeah, clearly he got taken down pretty quick. Night yeah, King's a, a beast. It wasn't even, uh, <laughs> I mean, the dude didn't even like give him a second. <laughs> Rushing towards the enemy full speed with a spear in hand seems kind of like a poetic way to go. As opposed to just kind of like standing there and waiting for the Night King to lob your head off. So, yeah, that I think gave... Gave Theon a little bit of a cool ending. I, I really like the slow pace of that. Like, they never do really a lot of slow motion in Game of Thrones, so I really appreciate the slow motion sure. in that scene. So, the Night King's impervious to dragon fire. Like, did anybody see that coming? No, I, I always thought, uh, you know, you could just burn him with a dragon. I figured that would be the best way to take him out. But it's true. I mean, we've seen, I guess, throughout the series that they can sort of walk right through fire. They're just too cold to be hurt by it. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It was a pretty awesome moment. Yeah. I never thought about it, but, it, yeah, it would have been a totally total cop out if she just would have been able to roast his ass <laughs> without uh without a fight you know but uh it was cool like it was, it was just like a really cool moment and something that i want to talk about with this episode there were so many amazing cinematic episodes i want to talk to the nerds out there yeah i want to talk to the game of thrones nerds uh personally you yeah you guys right there a lot of people have been shitting about you know like different things that happen with aria this should have happened that should have happened uh, maybe ice spiders all this other bullshit that been cool. look i don't care about any of that stuff sometimes when it comes to when you have a book or a screenplay you have to always like adjust for movies you can't bitch at the screenwriters for adjusting things the way that you wanted them to be. If you read the book first, it kind of messes up your head a little bit, your mind space. But if I, I haven't read the books yet. I've refused to, by the but, way. But the things that we're seeing right now in the episodes are not in the books yet. <laughs> yeah, um, I was, I'm was. i a book fan first, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but, and, you know, I, I've seen a lot of hate, yeah, especially for this last episode and the show in general over the last few seasons from... From yeah, from book readers and from huge Game of Thrones fans, I think it's because they have too much, they 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 build their expectations up too high in their heads, you know, and they come up with all these really wild theories that they're disappointed when it doesn't happen. 
And it's like, no, Game of Thrones has been doing a fantastic job of making a show. And um, even though a lot of, you know, a lot of the uh, intricacies in the book story have been streamlined dramatically. I mean, that's that's kind of what you want in a show like Game of Thrones. You know, you have yeah. to. Um, yeah. Now, now I have a yeah. question. Are you guys disappointed yeah. that the Night King took a dump in the third episode as opposed to just kind of writing it out to the six? Absolutely not. I, in fact, I expected him to die in this one. I was not shocked that he died like everybody else. Well, not everybody was shocked, actually. Um, I knew Cersei in my heart. I knew she was the big bad forever, you know. Really? I thought that he would last to the end, personally. I think he was just a tool to, like, tone down Danny's power and give us the real fight. Uh, uh, yeah, it could have gone either way for me. I'm not disappointed. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they say, oh, the Night King should have been the big bad climax of the final episode, taking him out. But for me, Game of Thrones, I always understood it to be a, a realistic human story. Right. And then you had the Night King, you know, out there as this other threat, this big fantasy threat. But, um, yeah, I'm glad he, he got out now and we get to focus on the human conflict again. Yeah, because it's Game of Thrones and no one wants a Night King to sit on the throne. Like, That's so. true. He <laughs> wouldn't sit on the throne. He just erases it. He would destroy it, yeah. yeah. He doesn't yeah. care about thrones. Yeah. A couple of uh, highlights and mm. one more little little thing that I got to bitch about. Maybe everybody wants to bitch about a little bit. <laughs> but how, what do you guys think of... Uh, Drogon flying up in the air with all those whites on him like freaking Siafu ants. <laughs> that shit was like it made my skin crawl. Yeah. <laughs> what's a what's a Siafu ant? It's so it's like a, a three inch long ant that eats babies in Africa, best known in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's terrifying. <laughs> I think a HBO should make a show called Siafu Ants about <laughs> eating African babies. So Azor Ahai, no one expected Azor Ahai to not be the two main candidates, Danny and Johnny. Can, Is it um, can Arya? You, can you explain to the to the not so extreme nerds what an Azor Ahai is? <laughs> so that's the prince that was promised. Oh, that, okay. That Melisandre has been talking about the entire freaking show. <laughs> she thought it was Stannis, and then she it ended it up Stannis. being uh, yeah. Jon Snow she, after. Then she thought it was Jon Snow. Then uh, oh, Sande I said it could be possibly Danny, and yeah. then Melisandre fucked off, and then everybody <laughs> still is like, I think it's probably Jon, and then, no, it's probably Arya now. But there's no flaming sword. So do you guys think it was Arya or do you think that they just said, fuck that stupid legend after like <laughs> building it up for, for six seasons? Yeah, we'll see. It's um, it is made a much bigger deal in the books. You get a lot more talk about the prophecy. Um, you know, you sort of get to hear the full prophecy and they do mention it more often going forward. Um, it seems like that was something also streamlined in the show. And it's unclear, you know, how much it will matter. I don't know if in the books we will actually get a literal flaming sword or if maybe, right. you know, that's the entire point of a prophecy. It's like a. You know, John and Danny, they didn't necessarily kill the Night King, but they got the forces together. You know, they fought against the the Long Night. So, you know, maybe that counted well enough. And can we give a moment of silence, please, to Edison, Beric, Melisandre, Jorah, and most, if not all, of the Dothraki? <laughs> they literally shit on the Dothraki. I mean, they they hyped them up with the, the flaming swords, and then they died, like, within 30 seconds. It was pretty cool looking, though. It was amazing. <laughs> like, watching the, those little lights go yeah. off, you're like, holy shit, that and is so brilliant. quieting. <laughs> there is no better way to create dread. Right. And yeah. then they kept, they kept going, they kept the... Uh, you know, cutting back to uh, the Unsullied, watching this shit, who really, like, have no balls, but have the biggest balls of anybody else in this fight. Wait, I want to make a point about that. So the guys with the balls ran away, but the guys without the balls stood and, and kept the, the line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but they saw they saw all these tough motherfuckers just die within seconds, and they were like, well, fuck it, let's, let's stick with it. Protect the retreat! Yeah. <laughs> it was an awesome moment. All right, looking forward, looking forward, all right. So at first, everybody thought Ghost was toast. Um, I even did. Uh, I was pissed off at Jorah for it. But now we know from the trailer of four that there is an image of Ghost. He yeah. survived. Yeah. So Ghost lives. I've been dying to see Namiria come back. To me, there's this fantasy moment where Arya is like about to get killed and Namiria comes with her fucking wolf pack and just fucking rescues her at the very last minute. That would be a very romantic notion for me. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but God damn it. I mean, I would lose my shit if it does. <laughs> it would be badass. I honestly think that Ghost and Nymeria are going to be like um, 
you know, bringing the dire wolves back to life. They're going to f- have sex? I think they're the last two in the whole <laughs> world. Yeah, but that w- they would be sister and brother. The Targaryens do it all the time. Yeah, but they would have some <laughs> retarded puppies, maybe big ones. Another you know? mad king, a mad yeah. puppy. <laughs> big retarded <laughs> wolf puppies. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Um, so you gave me a lot of numbers, man. So in the beginning, when Danny came to Westeros, she had a shit ton of uh, infantry and soldiers. Can we use cabin. the word arrived? Because she actually came on the boat. Yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> when she w- arrived to Westeros. So the Unsullied started with 8,000. What do you yeah. think they're left with now? How about I would say about half. Which was about what four thousand? Four thousand unsullied. Yeah, uh, that's reasonable. It may be. It may be less. I <laughs> at the end of the episode, you know, you're you see John running through looking around. It seems like everyone's dead except for you know a, a dozen of the named characters. But um, then, it, yeah, in the preview, it's, it looks like there's still some around. So uh, I would say maybe that's going to be a big problem. Maybe they're down to like a quarter of their initial troops, and so that's why the Cersei fight's going to be so hard. The Dothraki had eighty thousand. Members and yeah. they're all calv- cavalry, right? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, cavalry. Yeah, cavalry Eighty thousand so. troops on horseback in an open field, and uh, as White Robert would say, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to meet Dothraki in an open field. But those motherfuckers got eliminated within thirty seconds. <laughs> Knights of the Vale started with ten thousand. I think they're gone. I think they rode out with the Dothraki. That's what my opinion is. They weren't all that badass to begin with. And the Northerners, ten thousand strong. Most of the Northerners, those ten thousand, they weren't real so- soldiers. You know, they were just kind of like troops. They were the people. Those yeah. are the moments where we saw Davos kind of talking to the, all these like punk ass dudes, and the punk ass <laughs> dudes were like, "Oh shit, we're not soldiers. What do we do?" And Davos was like, "Yo, bro, man up." We got to go fight the undead or else your family is going to get killed. And they were like, oh, fuck. All right. No no problem. I feel like Davos was hiding behind the corner the whole time, just waiting for the shit to hit, <laughs> so he can kill Melisandre. Dude, that look in his eye when he walked out and watched her like fade away, he was yeah. just like, ah, oh, you bitch. Like, <laughs> one, of the, one of the most prominent memes that I saw was like, you know, in the first season, everybody was like freaked out that all our favorite characters were dying. And now in this episode, none of our favorite characters were dying and everybody seemed to be kind of disappointed by that. I am not disappointed by that no. at all. Considering we have three episodes left for characters to die. And I think next episode, I think the next three episodes, if I'm, if I had to make a prediction on, no, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. We're going to see some homeboys die. I think we're getting another setup, another battle and an ending. I think that's how it's going to go. Like a three act play. Who's going to win the game bowl. It's too obvious that everybody wants one side, so I, I'm, I'm going to have to say I don't know, and I don't even want to make a prediction on that. Like Maybe they kill each other. I'm a big uh, supporter of the Hound in Clegane Bowl. I think that'll be his glorious moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, He finally kills his brother. But uh, yeah, you're right. He might die too. That might be his, his way out. <laughs> I think that's one of the brilliant things about this, this TV show that a lot of people really don't appreciate. It's very surprising. You can't predict it. No, you can't. You, you can't, can't predict it. Nah. A lot of people thought that you know, the Night King was going to last the very last episode. He fucking died in a very surprising way by Arya, yeah. which led to a lot of disappointments. A lot of people thought that you know, Jon Snow should kill the Night King. Yeah. But uh, Arya did it, and dude. So Sansa and Danny's feud. What do you think the outcome of that is? <sighs> Sansa and Danny. I mean, I don't know because, um, and let's throw John into the mix as well because he is the rightful heir to the throne. Yep. So I think uh, we need to address these things before. I think, I think before they go after Cersei, they need to have sort of like a sit down and figure out. Okay, listen, what's going to happen after we defeat Cersei? If we do defeat Cersei, what do you think of uh, Bronn? Uh, you think he'll assassinate uh, Jaime and uh, Tyrion? Yeah, I completely forgot about Bronn. You're absolutely right. He's still he's on his way up with the crossbow. He's on his way up with that fucking big ass crossbow. Like yeah. you can't hide no. that in your back pocket. Bronn's yeah. too much of a bro, you know, to kill his to kill his friends. I think so too, dude. He had so many good times. He got laid so much because of those two. (laughs) And getting laid is the number one thing. More than gold or castles, I think getting laid for Braun is like more valuable than gold. The fact that you guys both say that so easily makes me think the opposite. That Braun just wants, he's a dirty little bitch. My final prediction for this whole second half, I think at the end, uh, and this will be my envelope. All right. Yeah. I think that, that one of the dragons is going to melt that fucking chair. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be badass. It was born of dragon fire. I think it'll be ended by dragon fire. 
but that's it's, it's inside of a room. I mean, the dragon's gonna. I think the to, dragon's gonna blast right through the ceiling and just waste that throne room and shit. melt that chair. All right. I think everybody That'd will be satisfied be awesome. by that too. By the way, who should kill Cersei if Cersei was to die? Tyrion. Without yes. a doubt. Yes. Yes. Without a doubt, it's got to be Tyrion. The last episode. No. If that happens. If that happens. I think she's toast in five. I think the last episode's a wrap up episode. It's like the hobbits going home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second breakfast, episode six. But I might be wrong. It could be like straight crazy to the end. I just feel like it's too much energy to throw at the wall. Like <laughs> no pun. <laughs> 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 I love it. Yeah. That's going to wrap up this crazy maniac panel on Game of Thrones mid-season. Uh, as always, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Man of Recaps, for hey, once absolutely. again honoring Miss Cast Entertainment with your presence. Yes. Yeah, I love being here with you guys. If uh, if anyone's come over from my channel, subscribe to Miss Cast Entertainment. These guys are hilarious, They and they're smart and funny. Talk a lot of good stuff, so <laughs> give them that subscribe. That's very true. That's a good recap of how we are. To recap everything. <laughs> Smart and funny. Dude, if you guys haven't seen, he has an episode on uh, on Forbes, like Forbes Magazine. Forbes Magazine. Recommended Link. his... Uh, the Avengers recap yeah. you need to see. All that stuff will be linked in the description. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. Hit up our merch. Link in the description. Cool merch. Cool merch. We've got all kinds of stuff. Die cut stickers, hats, shirts. I've got a really cool idea for yeah? a, for a Game of Thrones shirt mixed with Avengers. It'll be up within two days of the re release of this. So check that shit out. Until the next time, guys. Peace. And then I think there's going to be no crown to have because the Iron Throne will be destroyed. Yeah, but they can get married. He can be king. She can be queen. And they can both sit on the Iron Throne. That's too happy an ending for this damn show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be the happy ending. But you know, the Iron Throne, it's just the one chair. They would have to build a whole other chair next to it. <laughs> so I don't think uh, I don't think we'll end up getting that. I think I they think... should just dump that chair. That chair's not very comfortable at all. I think <laughs> let's get a couple lazy boys out there, you know, like with the <laughs> leather, with the automatic recliner, just going like uh, bzzz. <laughs> you know.